All right, um, so my name is Han Li. Uh, I'm from Intel, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Intel Hardware Intrinsics in, in .NET Core in particular, but also cover uh, the idea or the concept of hardware intrinsics in .NET Core uh, in general. Um, so I, I wrote the uh, original proposal for uh, Intel Hardware Intrinsics for .NET Core, uh, which has been enhanced quite a bit by Microsoft and the open source community. Um, but what I wanted to do today is basically show you what it is, why you will want to use it, and how you can use it. All right, so let me start with this question, okay. Uh, I listed some, uh, some of the computing domains and specific examples in those domains, and what do they have in common? And I think um, what Martin just described could fit in uh, HPC or image processing, um, and then you know, there are text data processing um, domains, machine learning uh, domains, and there are specific pro problems in those domains that are common, okay, if you had Say some, anything about performance, you know, pat yourself in the back, right? For performance sensitive code, um, you can uh, use Intel Hardware Intrinsics for potential performance gain, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you how, how you can do that. Um, so what I wanted to get out of this talk, or what you should get out of this talk is, you know, why, um, what motivated the design, uh, what they are, um, and then what you can do uh, in your own code. Uh, before we get into that, uh, I think uh, Martin uh, talked about SIMD uh, in one of his benchmarks uh, just before this talk, right? Um, not everybody may be familiar with it, so I, I thought I'd do a very brief intro to SIMD, which stands for Single Instruction Multiple Data. And it's, it's basically a way of doing an operation, uh, same operation, uh, on multiple sets of data using one instruction, right? So I have an example here where you are wanting to add eight of the 32-bit uh, integers together. And one way to do that is using scalar version, right? You say, okay, I want to take x0, y0, and then add it together, and then so forth until you add x7 with y7, right? So you do eight scalar operations to get to the result that you want. Um, another approach is to use SIMD instruction, right? So uh, one of the examples, is uh, Intel Advanced Vector Extension 2, also known as AVX2, and that operates on 256-bit uh, vectors. And what you can do is put those eight 32-bit integer data or data um, into 256-bit register in Intel ISA, that's YMM, right? So YMM1, YMM2, and you can use one single instruction, in this case, BP add D, to add those uh, two registers together to get the uh, answer you want. Eight operations versus one operation. You know, obvious advantage right there. Okay. How is SIMD being used in C-sharp today? Um, so C-sharp provides very nice abstraction for SIMD. Uh, it's, in vector, uh, it's in system numerics um, and vector variants. Um, I'm going to give a specific example using vector T. right? Um, and it's very nice because it abstracts the underlying hardware away from you. Right? So if you are a developer, you don't have to worry about, oh, am I running on AVX2 capable machine, or am I running on uh, streaming SIMD extension 2 machine, which operates on 128-bit uh, vectors. So if you have this code here, where you create two new vectors with eight elements, and you add them together, uh, you get this resulting vector V, but you don't have to worry about whether that was done with using one operation, or using two operations or eight operations. It's transparent to you, right? Which is very nice. So what's the problem, right? Or is there a problem? Um, so a couple of things, right? Um, so vector abstracts seem the operations for you. Um, if you want to access underlying hardware capabilities that are not SIMD related, you're out of luck, right? Uh, and I'm going to show you an example of that um, later. But here are some, and then the other issue, of course, is some of the operations that you do on vector are inherently difficult to do when you abstract the underlying hardware away. So one example is uh, shuffling operations on vector, right? When uh, vector t or vector of t abstracts the size or the count information away from you, that's kind of hard to do. Um, and then there have been other issues um, on GitHub 
that people talked about um, their needs, right? They wanted to do specific things to accelerate their application, but could not do it in C Sharp. So that basically prompted us to look at, okay, how can we enable these developers, right? And um, the idea is, is to use uh, hardware intrinsics, also known as intrinsic functions, um, also known as platform-dependent intrinsics. And these are basically special functions that map to um, specific hardware instructions. Okay? And these are not new, right? If you have, uh, if you have been using C, C++ uh, compiler intrinsic or uh, yeah, intrinsic functions, it's basically the same idea. Um, because these are very useful when um, you have an algorithm that maps better to the underlying hardware than the language construct that um, the language provides for you, or whether, uh, when you want to have maximum control over the code generation. Okay. Um, the benefit of you know, uh, hardware intrinsics having been explored before is that you know, it's been field tested, it's been matured, uh, there are specific use cases that benefit from those. So what we did um, when designing uh, Intel Hardware Intrinsics was to basically look at you know, what's out there uh, in CC++, how they get used, and how, how we can leverage the experience that those developers that know, knew how to program using uh, intrinsic functions could bring over to C Sharp. Okay. So um, that's what we did. And um, to to talk about specifics of Intel Hardware Intrinsics, we wrote this um, originally uh, at Intel, uh, but major enhancements have been made with the help of the .NET, uh, .NET Core community and, and Microsoft. And the actual implementation was you know, by Intel, um, by Microsoft, and .NET Core community. So I, I think this, this was the beauty of you know, having an open source project where People could, um, you know, bring the issues that they had, you know, what they wanted from from the project, but also contribute to the project, right? In terms of making the, the APIs better, as well as implementing the APIs. Okay. Um, two namespaces have been introduced: uh, System that Runtime Intrinsic, which contain platform agnostic um, data structures and uh, functions that operate over them. So here's an example: so 256-bit vector is represented by uh, vector 256 of T. Um, and then there are operations on those. And then there, are, there is a specific namespace for uh, Intel ISA. So those, that's um, system.runtime.intrinsics.x86. And they contain uh, ISAs that belong to, uh, to Intel, um, Intel architecture. Okay. Um, this feature has been available since .NET Core 2.1. Uh, as an experimental feature, so um, that way we had uh, we had a chance to improve the APIs um, based on the usage and and the feedback from the community. Uh, it's available today as uh, in the .NET Core 3.0 uh, preview feature, um, and it's going to be part of the .NET Core 3.0 release. Okay. Um, a little bit more about the intrinsic design. Um, each ISA class, class contains its supported property, so you can check the property before you actually use it. Um, and then actual functions or methods that map to the underlying instruction. Uh, we try to keep close mirroring uh, between uh, C-sharp hardware intrinsic and the uh, C++ intrinsic function, because that makes it easier for, as I said, those uh, who have experience programming in C++ intrinsic um, to use uh, C sharp uh, intrinsic. Um, and here's an example, right? In, um, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with pop count uh, function or uh, instruction, but it's basically a, um, a way of counting the number of bits that are set in uh, data, right? In, um, in this case, in uint, right? So, and that translates into uh, pop count instruction in Intel uh, Intel machine. Um, you know, it's a it's an operation that happens frequently enough and gets used um, enough times that there is a specific hardware instruction that corresponds to it. And I, I'm going to do a demo of using pop count. Um, and then, you know, for as I mentioned, majority of the um, intrinsics operate on SIMD. So as a result, um, majority of Intel hardware intrinsics operate on vector 256 or 128. 
um, and then some more details about about uh, the function itself. Okay, so let's do a quick demo. Um, okay. Can you guys read this, or is it too small? Can you read it? Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. So let me just create a new console project. I'm going to call it bit count. Okay. How about this? Can you read it? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I've Okay, the, so the first thing you have to do is um, you know, import this namespace, right? System.runtime.intrinsics.x86. This is where, um, where the class that we are going to use resides in. Okay, and let me insert the main body. So I'm just creating an a unsigned integer. Um, and then I'm basically calling this count set bits function, uh, which I'm going to implement. Okay, and here's the implementation. It's it's very simple, right? It takes in a, a unsigned integer, and it first checks whether this is supported property is set to true for this pop count class. And uh, what that basically means is, you know, the underlying hardware uh, supports this pop count um, ISA, right? And if that's a, the case, I just call pop count function um, with the N. Otherwise, I do software implementation, right? So this is how you, one of the ways you can count number of bits set, right? Um, this is by Corningan. Um, but then there are a number of other methods to do it. So I'm just going to run this. OK, and it says that I'm, use, I'm taking the hardware intrinsics path, and this particular number has 28 bits set. right? Um, you might wonder, OK, how can I, this, how, how can I test this uh, software fallback path? Well, um, .NET Core provides a number of uh, environment variables that you can set um, specifically for each ISA. So you can disable um, the ISA this way. And when I run .NET um, with this environment variables uh, unset, I guess, or set to zero, um, it, will, it will take the software for back path. So this is one way of testing your code. And this is available for all the ISA. So you can do something like enable uh, ABX2 or ABX, SSE2, um, set to 1 or 0. Okay, so that's, that's how, you would, um, how, would you, how, you, how you can use hardware intrinsics um, in your code. I've created another uh, program here, which basically does the same thing, except that um, I'm using benchmark.net for benchmarking. Right. And I don't have to talk, you know, talk about benchmark.net. Previous talks uh, have, have talked about it. It's a very nice uh, tool for benchmarking your code. And what I've done here is um, I'm creating, um, uh, let's see, four U-longs. And then I'm going to um, you know, basically measure how long it takes to, um, to count the number of bits. Right? And I've provided here three different methods of doing it. Cunningham, you saw already. Lookup table is using a pre-populated lookup table um, to count number of bits. And then hardware intrinsics, you already saw that as well. Um, and then I guess the other thing is I'm basically saying that the baseline is hardware intrinsic. So when you, once you run this, um, that will be used, used as a base. Okay. And for benchmark.net, uh, you have to use the release mode. So that's what I'm going to do here. 
Okay, this takes about 30 seconds or, or so. So let me hop back out okay. while, while that's running. Um, so this is basic structure of uh, a program that uses hardware intrinsic. Um, you basically import the namespace that, uh, that you need. Um, I, did, I didn't have to import uh, system.runtime intrinsics in my demo because I wasn't using uh, vector 256 or vector 128, so I didn't need that. But if you are working on SIMD, uh, then you need to, uh, uh, we need to import that package or that namespace. Um, and then the general idea is you check whether um, the ISA is supported, and then you provide the code for that. Otherwise, um, you provide other implementation or software fallback implementation in your code. Um, the checks get optimized away, so you don't pay penalty at runtime. Um, and if, um, if you just call uh, AVX or any ISA uh, method without uh, checking for if it's supported, there is a chance that you will run into uh, this problem where it throws a platform that's not supported exception. So um, check, check for that right, when you're using it. Okay, so it's, it's finished. Um, so three different methods, right? Hardware intrinsic was the baseline, so its ratio is one. Um, we see that it's about five, ter five times faster than the lookup table method, and then about 18 times faster than the Cunningham method, right? So these numbers will depend on, um, you know, on the size of the data and uh, other factors, but it basically shows you the power of using hardware intrinsics, right, for something like this. Okay, another example or demo that I'm going to do is um, structure of array-based ray tracer. Okay, how many of you are familiar with ray tracing? Okay, most of you, that's great. Um, so how do you vectorize a ray tracer? Um, and a vector and vectorize is kind of, I guess, overloaded term here. But when you're dealing with ray tracer, you're dealing with 3D uh, vectors, right? So you have, you know, your X, Y, Z, is inherently 3D. Um, even your color space, right, RGB is 3D, um, 3D vector. So um, you, there are basically two, way of, two ways of vectorizing that. One is using array of structure, and the other one is in, using a, a structure of arrays. And I try, I try to illustrate that here. So this is array of uh, structure vectorization. So scalar, uh, you're already familiar with, I went over, um, except that you know, we are not dealing with eight 32-bit um, integers, right? We are dealing with three floats or doubles, okay? So you have x, y, z, and x, y, z, uh, x, y, z, one, and x, y, z, two, okay? One way of uh, vectorizing that is basically, if you have a YMM register, which is 128-bit, you can put, you know, three floats in there um, in one of the registers, three floats in the other, and you can just execute one instruction, right? So instead of three scalar additions, you do one scalar addition. But because you are uh, vectorizing it as an array of uh, structure, notice that you're wasting one of the um, slots in that 128 bit. A better way to, um, to, to, act, uh, to vectorize this it would be to uh, use structure of arrays. Okay. So, so this is AOS, you just saw, and then this is another way of doing it, right? Using a structure of arrays. So instead of putting x, y, z in a single register, you put x1 um, through x8 or x18 in one register. Same thing with y and z, uh, y, um, y and z. And then you have three instructions, right? VIPS uh, that adds x1 and x, or ymm1, ymm4, and so forth. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. Um, so the problem, I guess, with the abstraction that vector, vector of t provides is that it's very hard, very difficult to do it this way, right? Because there's no way to shuffle it easily between, um, between um, the actual 3D representation and the underlying implementation. So basically, at the end of the day, right, RGB has to be in RGB form, vectors have to be in vector form. Um, so you have to have a way of converting those uh, between the two and um, using vector of t, that's kind of hard to do. So what we did when we um, introduced Intel Hardware Intrinsic was to add another test to uh, core CLR, right? So 
Uh, I built this test here. Um, so, but basically, there is a, uh, maybe I already have it open. Yep. So there is uh, there are uh, tests that are uh, built into Core CLR, right? And the original uh, test is called um, SIMD ray tracer, okay? And uh, this um, and you can take a look at like, vector.cs. Um, this is based on the vector three um, uh, class uh, in system numerics, right? And it basically is using um, a array of structure uh, to do ray tracing. So when we put it, uh, uh, or when we implement the Intel um, hardware intrinsic, we added this um, uh, test called Pocket Tracer, which basically does the same thing, except that it's using um, uh, it's using structure of array. So I changed the program a little bit so that it runs for. Um, uh, for about five seconds, um, and using 512 by 512 uh, scene. Uh, same thing with uh, ray tracer. So it's using uh, 512 by 512, running for about five seconds. And then, so here I'm just going to run the test. Uh, this is not based on .NET, benchmark.net, um, but uh, it does uh, print out you know, how many. Um, uh, or what, how many frames it processed. Um, so, f so this is Pocket Tracer, which is using structure of array, and it, it says about 100 frames per second was uh, processed. And then if you go to, go to Ray Tracer and Ray Tracer. So if you recall, that was about 100. And ray tracer, the original tracer is about uh, six frames per second, which doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I know uh, Intel hardware intrinsic version is faster, but not this much faster. Forty-three. Uh, that's more reasonable. We usually see about six times speed up, um, but uh, not necessarily running on my laptop. So, um, so we usually see between six and seven uh, speed up for this particular application. Um, so, who's using Intel? Oh, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's a time reminder. Um, uh, who's using Intel Hardware Intrinsics today? Um, so I mentioned SOA implementation. I showed you that. Um, another interesting use is in the CPU math operations in ML.NET. So ML.NET is machine learning library uh, from, from the .NET team. And um, they used to have, or they still do, um, they have a native implementation of uh, CPU math operations for, for their uh, machine learning library. And one of the things that they did was to use uh, Intel Hardware Intrinsics to port those to C Sharp. Um, and this chart, uh, this chart right here, shows the performance of native versus C Sharp. Um, and the point here in this chart is that the bars are very similar in uh, in height, which means that their performance is you know pretty similar. And if that's the case, you know what's the point of bringing them to C Sharp, right? Um, one of the advantages of doing this in C Sharp rather than in C++ is, um, you know, based on, on uh, what they said, was that they don't have to have, you know, platform-specific implementations uh, for different OSs and different bitness, right? So uh, before they had to, you know, carry 32-bit version for Linux, 32-bit version for Mac OS, 64-bit um, for Windows, and so forth, right? Now, because uh, they are using C Sharp intrinsics in C Sharp, um, and GTX takes care of compiling that into 
uh, into the native code, so they don't have to worry about that. Um, so that was a big plus. So in addition to having performance, performance benefits, if your application is already using native implementation, it has an, an other advantage that you don't have to have you know, platform-specific uh, implementations in your code. Um, they are being used in uh, build operations, so you know, pop count is one example. There's, um, there are other operations uh, like TZ count, um, leading zero count, um, that are used not, um, not in you know, those specific micro benchmarks, but in the context of image manipulation um, or you know, string processing, uh, string conversion, uh, and so forth. Uh, matrix 4x4 has been uh, optimized. Um, there is a hashing algorithm called uh, Blake, Blake 2, which is taking advantage of uh, interintrinsic in C sharp. And um, you know, if your application is performance sensitive, uh, then your application may may be one of the candidates, right? Um, so how do you actually go about accelerating your application? So first thing you need to do is understand your application. What are the hotspots? How can I improve those? Um, so I use uh, VTune Amplifier, which is a great tool. Works with .NET Core uh, for identifying has, identifying hotspots. Um, if you wanted to use intrinsics, there's a wealth of information about um, you know what they are, how you can use it. Uh, I've linked a couple of those here. There's existing solutions that use um, uh, intrinsic functions in C C++. So just last year there was a talk on uh, at CppCon about um, accelerating uh, UTF-8 conversion using C++ DFA uh, and SSE intrinsics. Um, I think one of the challenges that we can take is you know, change the C++ to C Sharp um, and, and make that work in C Sharp, right? Um, you would, you know, after you um, optimize your application using intrinsics, you would measure if it's you know, what, you, uh, what you expected or where you want it to be, you're done, but otherwise you can iterate this process, right? Um, and then last thing I wanted to mention was our experience with uh, working in .NET Core, um, introducing a new feature uh, to, uh, or a set of APIs, um, and then um, going through the review process, enhancing it, and implementing has been a pleasure. Um, Microsoft has been very open about, um, about the project uh, and we have had uh, we have gotten a lot of help from from the team as well as from the community so you know if you have you know if you have a project or a set of apis that you wanted to implement maybe related to hardware intrinsics maybe not i i'd encourage you to uh, work with uh, uh, the .NET core team uh, on uh, making those uh, come to real uh, reality okay. that's it thank you very much <laughs>